Do we have to associate advertising, though, uh, by, uh, as a necessity for television even in the next decade? I could foresee by 1981 a television system which uh, uh, didn't serve primarily as a medium of advertising, in fact, in which uh, advertising uh, had been legislated off uh, television. That is, uh, to me, it's a very uh, possible kind of thing. I think that uh, television and radio as communications mediums are so uh, powerful that uh, the trend in government toward uh, either call it information or propaganda, whichever term you want, will finally decide that these media over the air at least, that is broadcast radio, broadcast television, are far too powerful to be left in the hands of advertisers, to be left in the hands of private owners, and how they should be instruments of public policy. Mr. Switzer, may I suggest that you are using advertising as a overall category for a tremendous range of entertainment factors. I don't know why people on this continent uh, think of advertising as a homogeneous commercial entity. In actual fact, I mean, the Sesame Street came out of advertising, for the simple reason they advertise the only people who understand the medium of television. Now, the, they have to understand the medium of television to survive. They are the only ones who use it as an art form. And advertising, whether in the magazines or in radio or TV, these are the highest art forms, using art in the sense of making something out of available know-how and experience and creativity. These are the highest art forms we have in our society. Just because they're categorized as ec economically as, as advertising misleads people totally from the nature of advertising. If you want to kill advertising, just tell people it's culture. <laughs> and they got to study it. And that's the end of it. But I've been studying it for 30 years as a really important art form, much to the horror of advertisers, who sense instinctively an enemy in their midst. <laughs> because you, they know very well that advertising could not stand up to the enjoyment of creative enterprise. And uh, that is, once the culture dodges moved in, advertising would die fast. But I suggest that that is the uh, kill or cure for advertising. Take it seriously as an art form. Enjoy it as part of television programming. Play it as a serious part of TV and radio programming for audience enjoyment. And don't try to sell, don't, just don't pretend you're selling something. What you're selling is an ad. Uh, but as I say, this is the flip way of tackling the problem. I, and the advertisers have never looked at it this way. I'm just handing this to them to free. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you consider advertising essential to television or just acceptable in No, just uh, as one of the best parts of it. <laughs> uh, I still don't. Uh, I'd like to just comment for a minute on that. Uh, Shruti, we have in Canada what you described. Now, advertising, I think, keeps the broadcaster in touch with the, the average human being, whatever that may be. We have exactly what you described, something with almost no advertising, that is supposed to be getting the better interest, and that's called CBC Radio and Radio Canada. Now, they have 34 AM and FM stations, English and French, from coast to coast combined, Everybody praises them as the finest thing available in Canada, doing a great job, and yet they get 5.51% of the total weekly tuning hours in this country in a week. And private broadcasting, which we condemn, gets 94.49%, the one that has all the advertising. And CPC, which is supposed to be great and it's high quality, why, all we've got is a NARDA plan for the rich and the intellectual. And we haven't done anything about reaching the common man. And uh, um, can you imagine? Um, people getting any satisfaction out of thinking that they were the only people watching that event. It's a strange, dement uh, a strange fact that we do enjoy things in which we feel many, many millions of people are participating. Now why? I don't know, but 
it's uh, as mysterious as the fact that people enjoy reading bad news in a newspaper because it gives them a survivor emotion. And they don't like reading good news because it threatens them with dangers of new innovations they may have to buy or get used to, like cable television. But people, that's good news. Advertising is good news, and it threatens your whole existence with some new product that you can't afford or haven't time for. Whereas bad news is something that doesn't threaten you at all because you survived. So this is mysterious. In the same way, this matter of uh, mass audiences is in the electric age. The simple fact is there are only mass audiences. A mass audience means all at once. It has nothing to do with size. It has to do with speed. It, it's not how many, but how fast are you uh, involved. And mass is a time factor, not a sign, not a quantity factor. But the um, this uh, strange fact that people do want to be part of audiences of vast size. And the global theater now includes the Apollo 14 sort of theatrical show and demands total global participation. I don't say this is good or bad, it's simply part of the experience that is presented to all of us all the time and we don't want to be left out of the available experiences. I have, uh, I'm not trying to value these things and simply it seems to be inevitable that people will want to enjoy things with many other people if they can. Whoever said that people wanted to enjoy something just all by themselves, that is some form of entertainment. Where did the idea come from that exclusiveness was a special source of satisfaction in matters of entertainment? I don't think there's any evidence for it. 